Okay, picking up where we left off, we saw that once I signed out, the CAPTCHA appeared because we have it enabled. Of course, the edit links and all that disappeared as well. And we don't see any text here saying you, you would see this if you're allowed, so we're not in an allowed role. We said authenticated users. So we'll go ahead and sign in again. And now we can see the capture's gone and our label that says we're allowed is back on the page, visible. We've seen those settings work. Now we added that custom CSS setting, but we didn't really do anything about it. What we want to do, if we wanted to allow a custom styling of an instance of a guestbook to be different than some other guestbook in the site, all we need is to allow a custom CSS class to be added on this wrapper panel. And you can see that multiple CSS classes are allowed separated by white space. So this guestbook is one that we give you to kind of just general styling of the guestbook. But what we're going to do from code is append an extra custom one on here from the module setting if it's specified. And as you recall, we specified foo in our setting, I think. So basically here we can go if if that length is greater than zero, panel wrapper dot CSS class plus equals. So we want to leave everything that's already there. We want to space between it and the custom one. Okay, and so let's see. If we build that, Then we go back and refresh the page. Okay, so we refresh the page, and then if we view the source, we can scroll down to our guest book. And guest book starts right here, and you can see our foo CSS class was appended to the end of it. So that would could be put into your CSS to style an instance of guestbook differently from another instance. And you can use the same approach with other features, whereas we probably wouldn't do it here. Just reviewing, you know, all we did here simply for that uh, roles, you know, you could you would have some other logic, you know, before you enable a button or before you allow the user to do something, you would check against your custom setting that way. And we saw how easy it was just to declare it as a existing control that we have. Now, as I was saying, once you start getting the more complex features, we find that we need these settings in multiple places, and we end up having duplicated code where we're kind of always loading it into local variables from module settings. And there's a number of features in Mojo Portal where I need to clean this up because over time it's just evolved to have lots of settings used in lots of places. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a, a good way to do it here while we just have a few settings. But imagine how much more important this would be after uh, you get a lot of settings or if you have a lot of supporting pages. We'll go back up here to our guestbook thing, and I'm going to add a new folder. Components. And I'm going to add a class to that folder. And I'm just going to call it Guest book, that's a guest book configuration. Now, I'm going to be using this from the UI, and so it'll be convenient in this case if I just use this same namespace and don't have to include dot components, which it did for me by default since it's in the components uh, folder. But we don't really, you could if you wanted to, but then you'd have to include it. Um, and so basically, what we're going to do here we only need system.collections. We're going to have two constructors to this guy. The first one is just going to be like a default constructor, and it would return an instance with the default settings. And then we'll have another one where we'll pass in a hash table, which is what our settings are. 
And in this case, you know, we should throw an error. so that we don't uh, make a mistake or so the users don't make a mistake with this. Okay, now we're going to define a property for each of our custom configuration settings. So basically the ones we have are down here in our load. Well, let's actually declare them here. So we could go ahead and just grab these. Actually, these are our default values, right? So we could paste these in here. And these are private variables. So what we want to do is make corresponding public variables with just a getter. And we'll just differentiate them based on case. And the public returns the private one. And we'll just do that quickly for these others as well. Okay, now we need the logic that we had down in our load settings to retrieve that stuff. And that's basically a use here. And that will go in here. And of course, we've got a difference in case here, so we've got to fix a couple of things. But we don't need this part, that will stay where it was. We need a reference to. For that web utils, we need using mojo portal dot web dot framework. And again, we've got these case issues because we're using uppercase one and the other. Okay, so that's all good. And now, what that enables us to do is get rid of some of these things. So, in other words, we don't even have to declare these variables here. All we need is oops, and see here we'll just instantiate one to make sure we never have a null instance. We always would at least have the default values. And then down in our load settings what we'll change is we will just say and we'll pass in settings. And then now we don't need let's see, we don't need this, but we do need this logic to say if config dot instant CSS class. And then again the same thing go here. And then you would say config.use capture. And config.loud rules. So, what do we do? Oh, we've got the typo there. So that's encapsulated our settings in a neat way that makes it easy to reuse them in another place if we need to. And that's it for the time on this one. We'll see you in the next clip.